Welcome back, and welcome to the quick shot on Slate Coasters, here on LaserNug. I've created a new playlist on my channel called Quick Shots. It's for folks like me, brand new to lasers, just picked up your Thunder Laser Bolt, and you just want to try out some materials and test out the laser and get to work in Lightburn. But, like me, you're not sure and you have no appreciation yet of how the power setting speed and the DPI works. So you've probably been doing the same thing I started doing. You're going through different YouTube channels, trying to find some starter settings or at least some settings that you know somebody is comfortable with for different types of materials that you've picked up. Whether it's MDF, plywood, craft wood, coasters, different types of materials. And you just want a set of settings that you know work for somebody else so at least you have a place to start. So on today's quick shot, I'm gonna share my settings for slate coasters. Let's jump in. So for my coasters, my final settings, at least for now, is 350 millimeters per second, 25% power, both min and max, and I set my lines per inch at 400 lines per inch. So on these quick shot short videos, I'm gonna assume that you've already created your graphic. It's not an end-to-end -end how to, it's just to share my settings so you have a place to start. If you are looking in an end-to-end -end from start to finish how I created my first slate coaster and my initial settings, I'll put a link here just above me and you can click on that video and it'll help you go through as well as teach you about an excellent tool here in Lightburn called Center Finder. Definitely a must have or a must use if you're using circular material. So for my coaster today, I decided after several tests that I would put a much more detailed graphic in, as you can see, and I've tried three different fonts, one that's a little fancy, and then a couple other different fonts just so I could see detail. Because on my earlier slate coasters, I was just using simple graphics and simple printing or simple text. And as I was honing in on my settings, I wanted more detail so I could see the effect of those settings. So just for reference, over the last several packs of coasters that I've been testing settings, I've tested speed anywhere between 350 and 500 millimeters per second. I've been testing power between 15% and 30%. And I've been testing the lines per inch or DPI anywhere between 280 and 500. And I've narrowed it down to these settings because I think they work the best for me. And I think they provide the most consistent output I've seen across these various different slate coasters. I thought I had my settings all dialed in several times until I went to do a second or a third tile. And here's what I've learned about these slate coasters. They're not as consistent as I might like. Some are thinner than others, some are thicker. Some of the coatings are darker than on other slate tiles. But the one thing I did learn is that although this engraving area is flat, it's not flat like paper. If you take your finger and run it across the top, you can feel all of the little undulations and pits in the stone. I mean, after all, it is stone. So I had to keep adjusting those settings or those combinations because in some cases I'd have a great outcome, except every once in a while on a letter, it would be like it missed the engraving. Very small inconsistencies, but if you do plan on selling product, you wanna make sure you have a nice consistent graving on your products. So I just kept adjusting until I had the power and the speed and the DPI right that the laser would ride over all of these undulations and still engrave consistently so that my letters would come out clean, especially when you've got different fonts that have pointed letters. You know, for example, the tail coming off the cue comes to a nice point. I wanted to see the detail at that point. The other thing I did, as I mentioned, is I got a much more detailed graphic to put on the coaster so I could see how well defined the laser was able to recreate the image. It did a great job. I'm really happy with these settings. So you have your fill or your engrave layers done. You're gonna jump up to the top under laser tools, use the center finder tool, place your coaster into the bolt, set your points, confirm your origin, and send your job to the bolt. It's in the bolt, you're ready to go. You wanna make sure that you press the origin button at the top of the control panel screen. Then you're gonna press your frame button to make sure that the coaster is in fact within the engraved area. Little tip, the frame is always a square. So you're gonna find that the laser pointer will go outside the edges of the coaster. And as long as your coaster's in the center, you should be fine. 
Then you're going to autofocus, and once that's all complete, press start and see the magic happen. And I strongly recommend use your laser safety goggles. The light that shines or reflects back off of that coaster is pretty bright. Thanks for hanging out again with me today. Good luck with your projects on your new Bolt. And hey, if you have the time and you're willing, I'd appreciate if you did share your settings in the comments below the video or any helpful hints or advice that you have. We're all learning. And every day I learn something new on this Bolt. Have a wonderful week. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.